but water housing uh, inlet so that slides up like that you've then got your, your water pump feed hose this unit here goes around that way so that pushes into there and there's a little tab here just push your cap back over and that just locks it into place you then got your water barrel there under your lid fill it full of water this drop this is your pump part so this drops right into the bottom of the tank as close as you can get it um, this wee part here does slide up it's like a like a dust and leaf cover so that just sits on your top of your tank there um, so once you've got that full of water this is all plugged in you can then go inside and turn your water pump on down behind your uh, water pump inlet this is your gas bottle station you've just got your two two buttons there it opens up so you've got storage enough for two bottles that you leave very much like a barbecue you know, it just spins on um, and then you can go and turn your gas uh, parts on in the van just in front of it this is the outlet for your uh, Truma heating system um, so when it's running on gas and things like that you will get a bit of warm, out there, uh, warm air out of there um, so that's quite normal it's just a, a vent outlet so just behind your wheel here this is your um, self-containment grey water outlet so you've got a little cap there these are your arms undo and that opens up there uh, in your little container here you've got this is your breather breather hose so that just goes on the top of there uh, make sure that valve's open facing like that um, you also got a, a valve on this end so that that's in the open position there you have another wee cap here uh, you then grab the connection hose which is on same again just they lock on like that they can be quite stiff when they're new uh, and that one does the same on there and they come around like that so that's that's sort of your, your grey water system set up like that you do have a little full and empty gauge here so you can see when it's time to empty it um, when you're going to empty it there is a valve in under here um, so if you've still got grey water in the line you can shut this valve off um, and then you can come and take your caddy away but just make sure this one's turned off and that one down the end's turned off just so you're not spilling it when you're moving um, also in under this wee lid here uh, you got a little bungee cord so you can tie it around the rim or on the chassis just so you know this doesn't roll away in the wind or anything um, you also have a little cap here on the spout and that will screw on that end there just gives you a more direct pour when you're emptying your kitty your little sort of extra auxiliary tank so it work, works the same way there's no fuller empty gauge on that at all um, but the the little air breather tube that goes on the big caddy will also fit into this one as well and then you've just got your your main connection like on the big unit here but just above your um, water outlet there this is the filler for your toilet so it opens up there fill it in here just depending on the model they take around eight to ten liters um, there's also a pink liquid which goes in here just helps uh, kick yeah, you know, keeps things smelling nice and it also helps lubricate the pump and things like that. Um, so that up there, that just goes into the lock position. Underneath that, this is the, uh, the waste caddy side. Uh, little lever there, that pulls up and you can then slide your caddy out. These buttons in the slider, they're operated from inside there so you don't have to worry about that too much. This part here, this is your your outlet spout you do have a little little cap there as well uh, it turns in there there's some wheels on the base of the unit there this little handle will actually unclip and come right up so you can wheel it away uh, and then that just pushes back down in there uh, once you're all ready to go again just pop that in and just make sure that clicks into place uh, the other thing to know is up in here there's a little little black tube uh, that's designed to drain any water out of your your uh, filler tank there, um, especially over winter or you know you're storing the van for a long time. Um, just 
stops anything freezing or you know having the pump submerged in the water for a long period of time um, so yeah, you just pull the wee bung out drain the water put it back in and then you can just clip it back up into place so just in front of your entrance door uh, this is your 240 power socket right that slides up you have your connector there um, there's a little indent there which matches up with that so that pushes on and you can you can sort of slide it down to to help lock it a wee bit because there's a like a little cap that's on there as well but that is your main plug for your 240 volt this is your a-frame and your tow hitch uh, you've got your jockey wheel here so this you know winds up and down like that um, there's a couple of wee grooves on either side of here it's designed for these arms just to slide up into just helps you get the the wheel as high as you can once it's hooked on the vehicle you can undo this and you'll slide this whole unit right up so the wheel will sit up about here and just keeps it nice and high and out of the way um, just up beside that is your handbrake there so very much like a car so up is on press the button push it down and that's off you also have in the front here um, you've got your main trailer plug um, you've also got this is a breakaway cable so they're designed they can come around your tow ball and hook back onto themselves with the wee carabiner there um, so they're designed that if this and the unlikely event ever came off this cord gets pulled and it activates your handbrake so it just stops the van rolling down the, the motorway past you um, so yeah so once once that's on there that's all good to go you can if you like put this on a um, like a D shackle point as well it's just personal preference either way works fine your main hitch here this little black lever will if you push it up it'll stay up while it's off the vehicle um, as you lower it onto the tow ball it will lock down like that so you know that it's on the vehicle properly uh, then you have your secondary lock so that pushes down over top this little red button here will actually pop up a little bit and you should get a wee green ring around the edge that just lets you know that it's on there properly when it comes time to take it off the van lift this lock up you then have to lift and hold this lever so you hold it up like that and then, then as you're holding it up you use your jockey wheel to lift it off the, off the vehicle um, once it's off the vehicle that will stay up just inside your door as you come in the van um, this is your main sort of uh, 12 volt control panel eh? Um, up here, this little button on the left just gives you your current voltage of your battery. Um, below that, this is your main sort of master switch. So if you turn that off, that turns all your 12 volt system off in the van. Um, so, you know, turns your lights and everything off like that. So that's sort of your main one. Turn that back on. Um, this one here beside it, um, like I mentioned earlier, your once you've hooked your uh, water pump hose up, and your water caddies all full of water you can then come in and, and turn this on which is your water pump um, so that'll prime your system you can then go and use your taps um, one thing to note that if you haven't used the van for a while or you've drained water out of it it will pump a bit of air through the line through the system that's quite normal you just need to bleed that air out of the system and, and things should work fine um, underneath that this is your main light switch for the interior of the van so you can still keep your 12 volt on with that switch but this will turn your lights on and off um, and next to that is the switch for your awning light which is just out above your door here this is your tremor heating system hold, hold or press that turns it on um, the wee motorhome shaped one here that's your room heater so to go to that press the button that's currently on off it'll tell you that you're currently plugged into 240 mains there uh, and then turn that up to your desired temperature and then you know you, once you've got your desired temperature press the button there and that'll activate the system to start running it's a heating unit only so it's not like an air conditioner if it's 25 degrees inside your van and you want it to be 18 it's not going to cool it down like that but it will do it the other way around um, so once you come out of there, if you go to the next one, this is your water heater. Uh, you have eco mode, hot and boost. 
um, boosters designed that so when you first get to where you're going you've settled your water up you've run it through the lines um, you can then put it on boost which just gives the water system an initial you know boost feature basically it, it heats the water up a bit faster it will then flip back to the hot setting after about 15 minutes um, and it'll click in and out when it needs to to maintain that temperature um, and eco is it's pretty much the same as hot it just heats it a lot slower um, yeah it's just a if you're not in a rush for hot water you can chuck it on eco and it'll just trickle away until it gets to the desired temperature uh, oops, go back into there uh, and then we'll go off beside that this is your um, your power input I guess you'd call it um, so you go into there you're currently on electrical 2 and you have electrical 1 um, so that's purely just 1 kilowatt of power or 2 kilowatt of power so it's just how much power you're feeding into the unit and how fast it's going to heat things up uh, oh, so we go back into there uh, we go back there you have mix 2 and mix 1 so you can have it on those and the system will work out what's better to run on gas or electric um, so I think mix 1 is a more gas dominant selection and mix 2 is a more electrical dominant system so um, it'll, it'll flick between the two but it'll work out what's more efficient to run on each one um, and then you also have just purely your gas uh, function as well um, so that'll run your, your water heater and things on gas um, I'll just go back to mix two there at the moment and then beside that you have your fan system which ducks around the van so you have eco which is just a nice gentle air movement and high um, you can also use this so if I go back to the main room heater there and turn that back to off press that you can then go back to the fan and it'll just run a vent so it basically just circulates air around the van um, with no heating as such so um, just you know blows room temperature air around uh, and oh, you go back to there so yeah that's your main features you've got uh, room heater water heater gas or electric setting and your fan just inside your door here this is your battery box compartment so you got a little unit that flips up there that lifts up so that gets you to your 12 volt battery you shouldn't really need to, to worry about that too much as, unless you've got to change the battery out for some reason um, but that just sits in there just so you know where that is um, and your carpets will cover over this as well so uh, just to let you know where the 12 volt battery is so this is your uh, fridge control uh, you got your power button there press and hold that take a few seconds to turn on uh, once that's on you've got your little mode button there uh, you can select between power gas uh, battery or you do also have auto so it'll flick between what it, what it's um more easier to to use so you know if you've got your water heater running on gas then this will predominantly go to power or, or vice versa uh, so yeah so auto will automatically select what's best for it um, you do have a battery option there which is just faulted to tell me that it's not on um, the battery option will only work if your van is wired up with a 12 pin plug and your vehicle has a 12 pin plug it's designed that it will run off your vehicle's battery while you're traveling um, they're only designed so say if you're at home before you leave you've run run your fridge on gas or on power chilled everything down put your food in um, you can then select the battery option as long as you have a 12 pin plug set up and that will just maintain the temperature while you're traveling it won't chill anything down or anything it just holds that current temperature um, but it's not currently wired up like that um, but there, there is the option to do so um, you've also got your gas function there so purely you know just hit the mode button to select, select between those um, just under that is your temperature so you can just choose the amount of cooling you want in the fridge as well and then to turn the unit off just press and hold the power button again this is your, your oven and your range 
you've got your sort of your workspace here so you can lift that up um, there's also a wee clip here a little button clip so that'll pop on there just holds that up out of the way um, you do have your glass cover as well so that comes up um, thing to know is once you've been cooking on here and you've finished wait till this is sort of cool to the touch before you put the glass back down because um, they have been known to shatter with the heat so yeah just just a good idea make sure this is nice and cool before you put your glass cover back down um, for your actual controls for your oven um, you've got this one and that one and these two here are your controls for the top so very similar to a barbecue push and hold and turn you then have your igniter on the right hand side here so hold that in that'll spark and get your gas flowing through once it's going you can let go of the button and then you can just adjust your temperature from there um, and then to turn them off just just back to zero there um, you also have your grill so that opens up there there's a little rail tube rail along there that you'll be able to see um, this is the one for the grill so same again push turn and hold hit the igniter that'll kick your gas in um, and then once it's going let that go and then adjust your temperature from there uh, and your oven is very you know very much the same there's a, a rail along the back that you see the gas ignite on um, so same again press the button in turn and hold ignite it and then set your desired temperature from there so this unit here is your uh, combi boiler so it does your water heating and your room heating um, sits under your seat there just beside the, the kitchen pretty much don't have to worry too much about this it, it does its own thing once you've turned everything on um, the only thing to know is this little yellow lever here um, so when you're going to store the van for a long time especially over winter just flip this wee lever up and it drains all the water out of the system so it just prevents anything from freezing or bursting the tank or anything like that um, just make sure that when you go to use it again that you flip that lever down um, otherwise it'll just come in through your inlet and just pump everything out through the overflow in the floor um, and you won't get any water in your van um, so yeah just make sure that's down and then that'll fill everything back up when you go to use it again this is your inside part of your toilet um, you've got the bowl here this actually rotates so you can fit your legs in nice and easy um, you've got your little electrical flush button there so press that that will then flush into here those won't be sitting there normally um, so yeah flushes into there uh, you then got this little grey lever under here so it pushes around opens up into your waste caddy uh, so you can flush it again then once you finish just make sure you close that back up um, when you go to remove your waste caddy on the outside um, make sure this lever is in the closed position otherwise it's it won't uh, come out very well um, so yeah make sure that that's push around to the closed position um, and you're good to go.